Hello everyone from Boston, where we're looking forward to day three of the Under 30 Summit. Before we get into what's coming up, let's take a look back at some of the highlights from yesterday. I'm Emily Drury, and thanks for joining us for Live from Under 30, presented by J.P. Morgan Chase. So yesterday, we had a full lineup of big names and even bigger news. Here's a few things you need to know about. The Boston Police Department announced on stage yesterday that they'll use Mark 43's RMS technology for police report writing capabilities, as well as to manage investigative cases, physical property, evidence, and more. When we profiled the company's founder, Scott Crouch, in Forbes back in 2016, it was a part of our next billion dollar startups feature. Crouch, a member of the 2015 30 Under 30 list, said he saw a turning point where departments are ready to embrace something new to help efficiency. Also on stage yesterday, Steve Case announced the rise of top 10 tech cities in the U.S. Case has been focused on fueling startups in underserved cities since 2014, and this research is a part of the journey to, as he says, quote, level the playing field so everybody, everywhere, who has an idea has a shot at building the company and the American dream. Number one on the list, Columbus, Ohio. The state capital scored highly for its college presence, low cost of business and living, increase in VC deals, and the high number of funds launched since 2013. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one of the most newsworthy moments of yesterday, when Senator Jeff Flake joined our Chief Content Officer, Randall Lane, on stage to discuss the Kavanaugh controversy. He explained his decision to call for an FBI investigation, saying, quote, we ought to have more information, not less. As the conversation took place, the White House released a statement saying that it wants the FBI to interview anyone it wants in the Kavanaugh investigation. With six stages, all filled with great speakers and conversations, I can't recap them all for you, but a few notable conversations stuck out that are worth mentioning. Anthony Scaramucci talked politics and gave some advice to the audience. Quote, don't put your ego and pride into things you do. Christopher Wiley, former director of research at Cambridge Analytica, spoke about how the public can arm themselves against psychological influence tactics, like the ones used to try to sway the 2016 US presidential election. In information warfare, he said, quote, it's fair game to deceive, undermine, exploit, manipulate, and coerce. Speaking of the 2016 election, former Secretary of State John Kerry took the stage for a bracingly honest conversation about what happens when people don't show up to vote. His message, quote, we desperately need you to be citizens and to be engaged. One question he didn't answer, if he was preparing for a 2020 presidential bid. Also newsworthy, the announcement of the winner of the Impact Diversity Champion Award, which went to Elizabeth Galvin, managing partner of SoGal Ventures. I caught up with her after her acceptance speech to talk about what the award means to her. So SoGal Ventures and our newly formed charity, the SoGal Foundation, our North Star has always been to invest, educate, and build community around the next generation of diverse founders and funders. We do that under SoGal Ventures as venture capital investments in pre-seed through Series A companies who are revolutionizing health tech, enterprise software, and consumer tech. And through our charity, the Nonprofit Foundation, we do that by building SoGal communities in different cities all over the world and hosting tons of events and educational initiatives to really help even more diverse founders and funders make their startups successful um, or learn how to invest in startups so we can get more women in venture capital and angel investing. So this is something that's so important to me because right now the venture capital industry is seriously broken and it doesn't represent what society looks like. It just represents a single demographic of old white men. So over 77% of firms have never hired a woman in an investing role. Even more so, only 2% of venture capital goes to female founders. So the most important thing right now is getting more capital in the hands of decision makers, whether they're venture capitalists or angel investors, both women and minorities, as well as getting the hands of the money into these entrepreneurs. For example, black women entrepreneurs are the fastest growing category in America right now, and we need money going behind these amazing individuals to empower their growth, to empower their business success, and even more so empower and grow our economy. Absolutely. It's obvious that a theme of society and what it means to be an active part of it has emerged so far at the summit, and that applies to all categories of speakers. Take musician Hosier, for example. When we spoke a few minutes after he left the under 30 stage, he was adamant that being known for linking activism and music isn't as much of an intentional decision as it is being a thoughtful part of society. Here's a few minutes from our conversation yesterday. My showing support for activism and the music is, they're, they're, they're two different things, I think, personally for me. I think one is, informed by the other and vice versa or not even vice versa i think the music is is um 
and what I choose to write about obviously is, is informed by what I have a conscience about and what I am conscious of and what, what, what I spend my time thinking about or, or what's, what I spend time worried about or, or whatever. In the same way that, that well, I mean, that, and that's, that's the music. Any activism that I show support to is, is similar in that it's, maybe that's the only link in that it's just stuff that, it, 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 it's just decisions of conscience. It's just, it's simple stuff like, an initiative to to stop people dying out in the streets, you know what I mean, or whatever. It's it's um, uh, for me. It's it's not. You can view them as you know activism or whatever, but it's just they're just decisions of conscience, and that's that's it. Do you feel like you are able to lend your voice, being a more a known individual in the world? You're able to more lend your voice yeah. to these causes. Of of course, yeah, and I, and in some cases, you know, there's you'd be under no um, like artifice that let's say there is an important cause and that you can give it just that little bit of a signal boost by getting behind it or, or speaking about it or, or sharing it or whatever on, on social media or showing up for a rally and, and singing a song. Um, and if that's, if that's your way of contributing, that's your way of contributing. If your way of contributing is, is let's say if it's something you feel strongly about, civil or human rights or whatever, if your way of contributing is that you can make a sign or you can you can text your friends. Um, some, the, sometimes the best way I can contribute is, is yeah, if it's showing up and singing the song or whatever, that's that's it. But it's everyone's following the same decision of conscience in, 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 in being there and showing up for something, you know. So. And in case you need a break from all the content, I did too. Our under thirty village at City Hall Plaza was well equipped for providing one. Throughout the summit, attendees could take a break from all the content at the J.P. Morgan Chase Lounge. They also held two book signings here with Jenny Han and John Kerry. We've got hair and makeup for people to take new professional headshots. Here they are. And that's that. Thanks for joining us for the tour of the J.P. Morgan Chase Lounge. Now back to the content. Enough of politics for now, though. Let's talk about Netflix, specifically the Netflix adaptation of To All the Boys I've Loved Before, which was a mega hit for the streaming service. I asked author Jenny Han what it was like to turn her fantastic young adult book into a movie, and how she feels about being stopped everywhere for autographs, all over a cup of tea. Take a look. I've been writing books since my first book came out in 2006, and so um, I do have a lot of events, but it's been so gratifying for me as an author um, to have people who read my books, people who love the movie, and then they are the same like good, sweet people. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I always that's say, like, like what you want your my readers to be. are like yeah. just really nice people. They bring me baked goods, and they are like just lovely. And I think that it's really translated for movie fans to book fans, and um, vice versa. And I think moving from book to Netflix has also made a lot of people happy. What was that process like? The process has been really great. Um, Working with Netflix, I'm not just saying this because my publicist <laughs> Netflix is here. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. The team is creative. Um, they are like really collaborative, mm -hmm. and I think that they have from the beginning really respected and celebrated um, the the book readers and wanting to give them that experience of what the books give them, which I think is um, a warm-hearted story um, that's about like first love and family and friendship. And because at the Under 30 Summit we work hard and party hard, we ended the day with a bar crawl along some of Boston's finest establishments. Attendees, you earned it. So all of that happened on day two, but we're not done yet. We've got another day full of programming to look forward to. This year we're doing things a little differently. We set up a mix of off-sites for attendees to really dive into what's happening here in Boston in their respective fields. Some people will get a tour of Freight Farms, Boston's most exciting urban farming initiative. Others will go to Form Labs to get a tour of the 3D printing unicorn. We'll be going on a field trip of our own, but you'll have to wait and see what it is until tomorrow's show. Once we all get a taste of Boston's most innovative companies, attendees will also get to literally taste some incredible food. Our food festival is tonight, and it's always a highlight of the summit. Headlined by some of America's most notable young chefs, it's a don't miss experience for those of you here in Boston. Thanks for sticking with us for Live from Under 30, presented by JP Morgan Chase. I'll see you around Boston today and back here for more insights tomorrow.